Alright, so a few weeks ago, I had the idea to try out Cuphead's beta for a stream. I had a ton of fun doing this stream, and it's totally not going to be another video. But the only problem was, this only took up about half the stream time. Which meant I had to think of an idea on the spot. And, yeah, this is what happened. That's right, today we are going to be beating Cuphead, but every single boss I beat gets added to my screen. This entire idea came from one moment in the stream. Someone in chat mentioned a rat on screen. I had absolutely no idea what they were talking about, but as any totally sane person would do, I added a rat on the screen. Um. <laughs> There's a rat. Cuphead, but it's rat. There you go. <laughs> Alright, chat. And what else am I supposed to do with a rat on my screen other than beat Werner Worman? Hey, chat, we did it. There's a rat. Welcome to Chicken Ninja Stream. I think just those streams are better than mine. Anyways, with the introduction out of the way, let's get straight into the challenge, and there's no better place to start than the root pack. Just before this video begins, I have two more things to add. Number one, no, I'm not copying Justo. Shut up. The second thing is this Friday, January 6th, I'm going to be hosting a 24 hour stream to celebrate 50K. 50,000 people is absolutely insane, and I'd love to see each and every single one of you there. So be there or be square. Just be, I don't know. Anyways, onto the video. By the way, this challenge was also done on the Legacy Edition, so I can do the weapon swap glitch. I used it for this boss fight because it didn't really matter, and it's just kind of fun. For this challenge, I started from a new save file, so I went and grabbed the tutorial coin and the three coins from the NPC, just so I could have the spread shot for this battle. And yeah, I'm not going to draw this out for too long, because there's literally nothing to talk about. All I did was just beat the root pack. But after we beat the root pack, we've got to add something to the screen. And obviously, we're going to add some vegetables. And now we're on to Ribbian Croaks. I didn't use the weapon swap glitch for this challenge, but luckily for me, I have the spread shot so I can just deal massive damage if I get really, really close to them. Luckily for us, there's a lot of space to move around during this boss fight, so I didn't really have to worry about the vegetables in the corner because I could just move out of the way of them. But this is going to change because we've got to add something else. And of course, we're going to add... Kermit. <laughs> this is what happens when I get a PC. It's just everything is ruined. So for this challenge, I never used a super art just because I knew majority, if not all, of my super meter would be covered up. So I didn't want to accidentally use my super when I didn't know I had it. So I just settled for EX moves. Our next boss is obviously Goopy Legrand, and I don't really have much to say. He's one of the easiest bosses in the game. And overall, we don't have that much stuff being covered up by the screen. Again, the placement of the vegetables does suck because I can barely see my HP and super meter. But like I said, I don't have to worry about using my super because I don't have one. Once we beat Goopy, I googled blue slime PNG and what I pulled up is the only thing I can describe as a slime off the perk. What the hell is this? What is this? There you go. <laughs> it's literally staring into your soul dude uh anyways the next boss up is gonna be hildeberg now once we're up to hildeberg we've beaten three bosses in total which means pretty much the entire bottom of our screen is full which means we're just gonna avoid the bottom of the screen at all costs this fight is a lot like the Rivian Croaks fight because I have so much space to move around that I don't really have to worry about getting blocked off by pictures. I'm literally just going to try and stay level directly in the middle of the screen. Although it's hard because sometimes zeppelins fly down there, but if we get lucky enough, this boss is really easy. Scene. LBS. It's a woman. <laughs> Look at it! Look at how Kermit! <laughs> Look at Kermit, bro! <laughs> Bro, look at Kermit, bro. <laughs> yo, yo, bro, look at Kermit, bro. <laughs> I chose Hildeberg to be a woman because she she's a woman. I, I don't know. 
Now that we moved on to Cagney Carnation, literally the entire bottom of the screen is covered. Luckily for us, we don't need to be on the bottom of the screen at all, we can just stay on the platforms. So overall, this boss fight is literally just perfectly normal. It does suck sometimes if I accidentally drop down, then sometimes I lose where I am, but other than that, if I just stay on top of the platforms, I'm fine. There you go. That is the highest quality image you're gonna get. Hold on. I need a better image. Is the vegan teacher still alive? Bro! With aisle one completed, everything at the bottom of our screen, including my health and super bar, is completely obscured, and we're on to fight our next boss, Beppy the Clown. To be completely honest, losing my health and super bar is not absolutely horrible, because I know I have three hits, and it's not that much to keep track of. And since I haven't picked up a super art yet, I don't have to worry about accidentally using a super art, and I can just use EXs for the entire fight. I used the pea shooter in the first phase, and since my secondary weapon was the spread shot, I used that for literally the entire rest of the fight. It's absolutely OP for the second, third, and fourth phase. Second phase, you can literally just jump into the hitbox and deal a ton of damage. Third phase, you can just sit underneath him and do even more damage. And the final phase, you can again sit in his hitbox and either use your EX moves or just shoot him a lot. Anyways, the clown goes down, and for our troubles, we add... No. No. No, that's not it. Put, I don't know, Ronald McDonald up there. Perfect. Alright, now I'd probably say this is the point where everything gets absolutely horrible. Especially for this boss, because I want to stay as close to the left side as I can, just because him and majority of his attacks come from the right. And the only problem is, two clowns are in the left corner of my screen, so I can't do anything about that. So I had to push up way closer to the boss than I actually wanted to, which meant I took way more damage. Luckily for me, I'm super used to doing the S rank for this boss fight, so I know when I have my super built up, so I used it a lot throughout this boss fight. But yeah, other than just moving slightly forward in all the other phases, nothing much changed. The final phase is really easy, because I can just sit right in front of his face and not be blocked by anything. But yeah, we finished it. He's smacking the sh- He's like- He's like ducking around <laughs> <Ronald> McDonald! <laughs> So, for this boss fight, I originally had Will Smith on the left side of the screen, but people told me to move him, so I moved him over to the right, just if you were wondering. Anyways, it doesn't really matter where he is, I still can't see literally anything. It probably would have been smart to go up on the platform, but I barely did that at all. I tried to use my spread shot as much as possible, because if I can use it properly, it will deal tons and tons of damage. And if I deal a ton of damage, the boss fight's gonna be over way faster. Once we made it to the final phase, I made sure to use my pea shooter and stand on top of the platform, because if I did, I would be able to shoot her directly. And if you didn't know already, the pea shooter actually does decent damage. I feel like everybody knows what's happening. Like, this is not surprising at all. Alright, we're almost done in Gwile 2, but literally the entire bottom and left side of my screen is completely covered up. For the first phase, I'm gonna stick to the back of the screen just because when the eggs explode, I don't have to worry about anything because I know I'm safe at the back of the screen. I do have a little space where I can see myself, which helps out with dodging, especially in the second phase. But other than just completely guessing where I am at all times, there's nothing I changed in this boss fight. It's a lot like the Jimmy fight, because I'm trying to stay in the middle of the screen as much as possible, because I can't see anywhere else. The final phase is especially easy, because most of the time Wally sits at the bottom of the screen, so I can just stay right above him, which is perfectly in the middle of the screen. And with Wally defeated, we're gonna add to Kermit's family, and add Big Bird. Our next boss is going to be Grim Matchstick, but as you remember, we have the Pea Shooter and the Spread Shot, which all suck for Grim. So I'm literally going to go back and do a run and gun just so I can get the lobber. Now you already know, with the lobber, this boss is absolute easy mode. The only problem being that I can't see any platforms at the bottom of the screen. This is only a problem if there's no more platforms for me to actually jump on. Most of the time there are platforms for me to actually jump on, at least ones that I can see. But every now and again, there's going to be one where I just can't see where I'm going, and I'm just going to hope that I land on something. 
But yeah, after a few attempts, we got good enough RNG to actually finish it. Chat, do you know do you know what this is? Why imagine dragons? Let me tell you. Let me tell you why it's Imagine Dragons. I'll tell you right now. Imagine Dragon these. <laughs> All right, ignore me having the humor of a toddler. We're on to the next Inkwell Isle, and of course, we're on to our next boss, Rumor Honey Bottoms. That's right. Luckily for us, we're back at it again with even more platforming. For this fight, I kept my lobber equipped because I knew it does a ton of damage, especially for this boss fight. I also made sure to bring along my spread shot for the second phase, because if you didn't know, the spread shot, especially during the second phase, absolutely melts. Overall, this boss fight's just really annoying, because not only can I not see the platforms, but I also just can't see what she's hitting me with. Luckily for us, I can do a ton of damage during our phase transition with the spread shot, and after using two EXs with my lobber, we're done. Believe it or not, chat, I, I, I believe this may... I, 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 I believe. That's top 10 joke number nine, baby. Let's go, there's a beat. The next boss we've got is gonna be Captain Briny Beard, AKA Captain Bing Bong. I did end up decreasing the size of some things on the screen just because I realized we still have like half the game left and already my entire screen was full so I did have to decrease the size of some things. This boss is definitely one of the easier bosses we've had so far just because it doesn't have any platforms. If we're lucky, pretty much all of his attacks will come from where he is and luckily that's still visible on screen so they're really easy to dodge. And the top of our screen isn't covered yet, so we can still see the barrel, so overall, this boss is not that bad. Enough of the screen is showing for me to dodge the boat's attacks. Unfortunately, I forgot to take off the lobber, but that doesn't matter. This is not gonna make any sense for anybody who doesn't know what this is. But for everybody who does know, it does make a lot of sense. AKA Captain Bing Bong. Just know upstairs I'm going hard. Bing Bong. Okay, our next boss is gonna be Cala Maria, and this is where it becomes a serious problem. Because a lot of the later plane bosses literally just become bullet hells. There is so much stuff that she shoots at you, whether it's a minion or it's just her actually trying to attack you. And to make matters worse, there's so much stuff on my screen that it literally makes a complete circle. When it comes to the first phase, there's so many different combinations of minions she can send out. One of the hardest things to dodge was definitely the pufferfish attack, because not only is there stuff coming from the bottom of the screen, but it's also coming from the top of the screen. So I'm really just gonna have to guess on whether they're there or not. The second phase gets slightly easier because majority of the projectiles that actually get shot out are visible in the middle of the screen, which makes them way easier to dodge than if they were off screen. Once we're done with that, we get really lucky because the final phase is super, super easy. We're pretty much constricted to the middle of the screen, which is exactly where I can see, so it's actually perfect. So it was pretty much a done deal once we made it to the final phase, and we got it done. Chat, I don't even know where he goes anymore. There's no more room for Squidward. Oh, boo-hoo! Mr. Squidward is sad because he ain't got no babooches! Alright, we've got three bosses down. Our next boss up is gonna be Sally Stage Play. Now, this boss wasn't extremely hard, but I'm pretty sure this one clip sums up how I felt about it. Jesus Christ, what the fuck is that? For the first and second phase, she basically follows you around, so I can make sure that she stays in the middle of the screen, but that changes in the third phase. During the third phase, she stays in one spot, and the biggest problem is I can't see what thing is coming up next, because usually in the top left corner you can see what attack is coming up next, but that's completely blocked by EDP, so I have no idea what's happening next. Luckily, we brought the spread shot with us so we can just stand right underneath her and deal a bunch of damage. 
And then once we're done with that phase, we're gonna EX spam with our pea shooter to deal even more damage. And then once she's in her final phase, all we gotta do is hit her a couple times with the spread shot, and we're finished. <laughs> oh my god, bro. How to get cancelled, baby. We're getting cancelled today, bro. <laughs> I don't have any reason for this. This is Sally stage play as an actor and she's blonde. I, I don't know. Alright, we've pretty much ran out of options. Now the only boss we have left is Dr. Cal. This is without a doubt the hardest boss we've faced so far because we have the most stuff on screen and we just can't see anything that he shoots at us. Now I have one HP and I can't do anything about that. I can't. <laughs> the laser is pretty easy to dodge, although I can't see where I am if I go to the top of the screen. And to make matters worse, when I go to the bottom of the screen to shoot the little robot things, I can't see the robot things or myself. So overall, the first phase is just absolutely insane. And again, I'm going to try and stay in the middle of the screen, but I can't really hit everything if I'm in the middle of the screen. So I'm just going to try my best to move around and not take damage. Once we're done with the first phase, we move on to the second phase, which is extremely easy, especially if I have my super built up. If you have your super, you can pretty much do it in one cycle, which is insane. Now that we're in the final phase, I just, I don't even know. So I can actually dodge. Never mind. Just kidding. It was a joke. <laughs> the final phase is normally pretty hard, but with more than half of my screen covered, it just becomes absolutely insane. Like I said in the beginning, this is by far the hardest boss I've faced so far. There's just so much stuff on screen, and it's so hard because so much of that stuff can be covered up. But with just tons of attempts and maybe some skill, we got it done. Yes! Yes, boys! The two humans can go together. It's an old man. I got tired of using the pea shooter and I really wanted the roundabout, so I went back and collected some secret coins, and I also went all the way back to Inkwell Isle 1 just to do treetop trouble. Once I finished that level, I had enough coins to buy both the roundabout and the smoke dash, which are both gonna help me out a lot. Alright, now we've pretty much done a complete circle. We're back to the rat. To be honest, right now this boss fight's probably easier than it was the first time I did it because I can at least see some of the screen. The first phase is pretty easy because a lot of his attacks are still visible. The second phase does get a bit more difficult, but luckily I do have enough time to actually react to the bottle caps before they actually hit me. The final phase is pretty easy as well because I have my spread shot so I can use the EXs for massive damage and I also know where the wood panels are going to drop just because it's a pattern. But yeah, once we finish that, we finally get to bring back the rat. They wanted it and I shall deliver. Where is the rat? Here he is, boys. <laughs> They're like hugging the rat. <laughs> it's two guys, two dogs, and a rat. Okay, we're on to the seventh and final boss of Inkwell Isle 3, and that's going to be the Phantom Express. The first phase of this boss fight is probably one of the more difficult ones, but it is helped by the fact that we do have the spread shot, which makes it a lot easier. Of course, since the entire top of my screen is blocked, I can't do anything about the pumpkins, but like I said, the spread shot works really good to defend against the eyeballs. Once we make it to the second phase, it's definitely way easier because all I have to do is just stand on the right of the platform and just shoot. Nice job, officer f face. You really connected the dots on that one. And the third phase is pretty similar. Once I kill the one on the left, I can just switch over and stand on the right of the platform and do the same thing as I did in phase two. The final phase is where I just stop talking about it being easy because it's a lot like Dr. Cal's final phase. There's just a bunch of stuff on screen and since the top is blocked by all the pictures, I can't see where it's coming from, so that makes it extremely hard to dodge. I also don't know when to be worried because I don't know what my HP is, but that didn't matter and we got it done. You see, it's Thomas the Train. Alright boys. Ron to Inkwell Hell, and currently, as you can see, I cannot. Obviously, our first boss of Inkwell Hell is going to be King Dice, but we can't make it to that boss fight just yet because we've got to kill some mini-bosses. 
I had a decent king dice run going, and then I made it to Pip and Dot. Yeah, yeah, I'm not doing that. The first boss up in our winning attempt was the Tipsy Troop. Now, I'm gonna be completely honest, this was definitely one of the more harder bosses. This is all because of the little glass on the floor and the big one in the back. First off, their attacks are just normally annoying to dodge, but also I just can't see when they're actually doing them. My only way to know when they are attacking is to hear the sound effect, but they have the same sound effect, so I just have to guess who is actually attacking. But luckily for us, the small one at the bottom can get killed really, really easily. So we're going to take out that one super fast, and then we're also going to focus on the big one at the back. And then once those two are done, we don't have to worry about anything else, and we can kill the other glass, and now we're done. That one clip probably sums up how much I hate this boss. There's nothing specific about this challenge that makes it any bit worse. The parry attacks are slightly harder to hit because I don't know what is actually parryable, but it's just the skull attack. I don't know why, I just can never dodge it properly, and I don't have the smoke dash, so it's like basically impossible to not take damage during this fight. Like I said, I can stand in the middle of the screen and the skull attack will still be visible, it's just I hate it. You already know what I chose for my third and final mini boss. I've got the spread shot. I've got an eight ball in the middle of the screen. Of course, I chose Mangosteen. I don't have anything to say about this boss fight. Like I said, he's in the middle of the screen and I can see all the chalk that goes by me. So I don't have to worry about anything. I just use the spread shot and absolutely melt him. It's not that bad. Now that we're done with those three, we move on to the actual final boss fight, King Dice. And for this final boss fight, it's definitely not as hard as the first two minions. Since I'm constantly parrying cards, I'm always in his hitbox, so whenever I shoot, I'm hitting him with all of my spread shot bullets, so it does a ton of damage. And all the parryable cards are high enough off the screen that I can actually see them, so for the second final boss, it's not that bad. Alright chat, round of the final boss. Let's get it, boys. We indeed did get it. Strategy-wise, the first phase doesn't really change compared to a normal playthrough. The only thing that changes is that it requires a lot more focus than it would normally. I have to make sure I constantly know what attack he's doing, and I do that by paying attention to him telegraphing it or by sound effects. For example, I can't see when the purple devils come from the left or right, so I have to make sure I see them in the background before they actually reach me. All the other attacks are decently normal to dodge because they all spawn in the middle of the screen, so I know where they're going to spawn and I also know where they're going to end up. Now we move on to the second phase of this boss fight, which is without a doubt the easiest phase. He doesn't have that many attacks to actually dodge. The axe attack is easily dodged by just standing in one spot. The bombs are also extremely easy to dodge because he does an animation which tells you which side the bomb's going to be on. And finally, the chips that fall from the ceiling are annoying to dodge, but as long as I'm paying attention to where they're actually falling, I know the pattern and I won't get hit by them. The third phase is absolutely insane. I'm going to use my spread shot in the same way that I did in King Dice, so I'm going to try and get into his hitbox, so I'm just dealing a ton of damage. But other than that, there's so much stuff I have to pay attention to. The bats that get spawned in the ceiling, I don't know which ones are attacking, and I don't know where they are. The smaller devils that get spawned on the left or right, I don't know when they're shooting, and I also don't know if there's one on that side, because they're both blocked off. And finally, since the two platforms get deleted, we only have three left, which means the chips are way more frequent. Once we make it to the final phase, all the minions get killed, so we don't have to worry about those. But we only have one platform left, so we're just gonna spam EXs and hope we don't die. Hold on, hold on, chat. Hold on, chat. Hold on, chat. Yeah! Let's go, baby! Let's go! And with the devil defeated, we add our final picture to the screen, ending this absolutely insane challenge. So there we go. We have officially beaten Cuphead, but every single time we beat a boss, it gets added to the screen. Hopefully you guys like this video. I've got so many more planned like this, so I really hope you enjoyed it. 
Like I said in the intro, I am doing a 24-hour stream on Friday, January 6th to celebrate 50k subscribers. So make sure you're there, and thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please leave a like and consider subscribing, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.